Hello everyone and welcome to my video. We are going to continue on the Mad Hatter's Tea Party and last time we were working on that we made the chair with the little chair on top of all the books. Today we are going to make the little mouse that is sitting on the little chair here. I don't think he has a name. Um, he might have but I really don't know if he has. Anyway, this is going to be the little uh, white mouse that is sitting on that chair. So today I used uh, some green flower wires. I made three in a little longer size than I actually think they are going to be in the end uh, result, but I wanted to have enough to work with. And I am twisting it there uh, right on the middle, so I have the top for the neck part and two arms and the bottom part has two legs and the third piece I am using to kind of wrap around the body um, of the little mouse here. So this is going to be the wires for the mouse. I am measuring against the chair here and there to make sure that I get the size that I want. Uh, and I'm cutting off the little excess from the third piece that I just used around the tummy. Um, and I am going to shape it here so it is kind of sitting. And then I will cut the pieces into the length of the legs that I want them to be. As you can see, they're way too long right here. Um, so I'm just measuring and then cutting the legs into the size that I want them to be. Then I am going to cut the arms into the length that I want them to be. Uh, and I actually made a little bend for the elbow. Uh, I don't think I'm showing that, but I did. I used my round nose pliers to uh, bend the top wire for the head down into kind of a um, circle or a, um, what do you call that? Um, yeah, a circle. Um, and that's for the head so that it is going to stay in place when I mold the little head of my um, polymer clay. Now it is time for the head, so I'm using my opaque white polymer clay and I'm making a shape that I can place around this little circle thing that we made here on the top. And um, I'm making sure that this is really nicely stuck in there so the head won't go anywhere. And now it is just a game of um, trying to figure out how you want the little face of the mouse. So I actually took a lot of time to sculpt this. Um, I'm not sure if you want to see everything, but I leave it in um, and you can skip it if you want to. So anyway, let me put on a little bit of music and then you can see me sculpt the head.
I picked everything before I continued this way I'm sure that my head is all safe. Now I am just taking a piece of clay that will fit around the tummy of the little mouse and I'm going to wrap that around him. I molded it until I was happy with how it looked so that you can't see the connections and so. Um, and for the connection between the body and the head, I actually used a tiny bit of bacon bond because um, it wasn't uh, working without it. So I'm just using a tiny bit of bacon bond to connect the two parts here. I made some flat pieces for the arms that is um, only the length of the arm and just a tiny bit wider than I think they need to be. And then I am kind of wrapping this tiny, tiny piece of clay around the um, middle wire for the arms and um, trying to make it look good. And I'm going to do this on both arms um, and placing them like I want them before I go and bake it again. So now I am going to work at the hips. Uh, just measuring and making sure it still fits on the little chair. So I am taking a piece of my clay and making two balls that I'm going to flatten out a tiny bit and then pop them on each side of the bottom of the um, body for the hips. Uh, and yes, that is going over uh, the little uh, wire that you see for the feet itself or the foot itself. And I did use a tiny bit of bacon bond to make sure everything will stick together when it has been bacon. Uh, you can use Fimo liquid instead if you don't have bacon bond. Now I'm just softening out this hip area so that it, it looks like I want it to. And then I'm making the other hip before I continue. Then I am rolling a tiny snake for the tail and I am going to place it. And again, I am using a tiny bit of bacon bond to make sure it will uh, sit uh, after it has all bacon. Um, I don't think I show you. Yeah, I do. Uh, but I am using a tiny bit of bacon bond for making this tail uh, stick. And then I am just going to shape it until uh, I like it. And I'm actually going to make it kind of hang loose over the chair here. And just to preserve this, I am going to bake it very, very carefully just for a few minutes to make sure everything is going to stay in place. Then it is time for the feet. So I am measuring the length and making two of them. And just like with the arms, I am flattening them out, trying not to make them longer, but I'm flattening them out. And then um, with using a tiny bit of bacon bond, I am rolling them around a wire and make them look as good as I can. Um, and um, hopefully it will all uh, look nice in the end. Just take your time with this. The little mouse in the original is having kind of a little uh, sweater around him in this uh, dark purplish color. So I just rolled out a piece of clay in a thin setting on my pasta machine and cut out a square and I'm just uh, placing that around him uh, from uh, the front of him around his arm and then uh, towards the back and to the other arm. I'm not going to show you the whole process here but um. I'm just uh, taking my time and fitting this little jacket around him 
and when I'm happy with the look of it, I am going to bake him one last time. I did let him cool down before I continued with painting. Here I am painting his ears and his nose with a light pink color. Then I am using a sky blue for the eyes and I'm using a dotting tool to make a tiny tiny black dot in the eyes and make sure it is not covering all the blue because then you can't see that he has blue eyes in the end. I am going to give him a tiny bit of fur and uh, you could use flock powders for this but I am going to make my own flock powder using some uh, wool yarn that I am going to uh, brush out first and then I am off camera almost sorry about that but here I am cutting this uh, yarn in really 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 small pieces so I'm kind of making my own flock powder and I'm going to use that to glue onto my little mouse then I am going to use my taggy glue and I'm placing a tiny bit of taggy glue where I want the fur um, I don't want fur on the nose in the eyes or in the inside of the ears so I'm avoiding these places also the little uh, jacket he has on is not going to be furred but I am putting a tiny bit of glue on a little area then I am putting the um, flock on there and then I'm gluing another little piece and putting flock on there and I'm just making sure that I have more than enough flock on these places because we are going to leave him to dry when we are all done and um, when it's all dry, I am going to cut him so he looks nice again. So as I said, I am going to cut the flock down and actually cutting it almost down to nothing all over the body so that you can see the shape of him again and that he is looking cute and fluffy without being um, too fluffy. And for that, I am actually using a cuticle scissor um, that I found on Aliexpress and um, I think this is actually really good for this um, Cutting this small flock pieces into the size you wanted. I really took my time with this um, So I'm not going to show you the whole process But just take your time and enjoy it put on a TV show or something while doing this um, and then slowly slowly, but surely you can see how he is coming out of the fur and looking really cute. I don't like the shine there is on the little coat uh, from the polymaclay, so I mixed a color that was almost exactly the same as the polymaclay for the little jacket and I'm painting it, giving it a more um, matte look that I like a tiny bit better than the shininess from uh, the polymaclay. I want the nose and the eyes to be really really shiny so I'm using a tiny bit of my UV resin nail gel um, just using a, um, a dotting tool to take it from the brush and to where I want it. Remember to clean the dotting tool really good before you uh, use it for anything else. And then I'm just placing him under my UV light. So here is the little mouse finally done. I'm using a tiny bit of tacky glue to glue him on the seat where he belongs. I am not going to place him in the teapot yet because I'm not quite sure where I want him. Um, but I will place him and take a little picture of him so you can see him in place. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and happy crafting.